Welcome to the mini English world. I'm Anna. Anderson's Fairy Tales, The Shoes of Fortune has six parts. A beginning. What happened to the counselor? The watchman's adventure. A moment of head importance, an evening's dramatic readings, a most strange journey. Metamorphosis of the copying clerk. The best that the galoshes gave. We've only read about the first one today. Thank you, Amber and Christopher, for taking the time to read this. A beginning. Every author has some peculiarity in his descriptions or in his style of writing. Those who do not like him magnify it, shrug up their shoulders, and exclaim, there he is again. I, for my part, know very well how I can bring about this movement and this exclamation. It would happen immediately if I were to begin here, as I intended to do, with, Rome has its Corso, Naples its Toledo, ah. That Anderson, there he is again, they would cry, yet I must, to please my fancy, continue quite quietly, and add, but Copenhagen has its East Street. A beginning. Every author has some peculiarity in his descriptions or in his style of writing. Those who do not like him, magnify it, shrug up their shoulders, and exclaim, there he is again. I, for my part, know very well how I can bring about this movement and this exclamation. It would happen immediately if I were to begin here, as I intended to do, with, Rome has its Corso, Naples its Toledo, ah. That Anderson, there he is again, they would cry, yet I must, to please my fancy, continue quite quietly, and add, but Copenhagen has its East Street. Here, then, we will stay for the present. In one of the houses not far from the new market a party was invited, a very large party, in order, as is often the case, to get a return invitation from the others. One half of the company was already seated at the card table, the other half awaited the result of the stereotype preliminary observation of the lady of the house. Now let us see what we can do to amuse ourselves. Here, then, we will stay for the present. In one of the houses not far from the new market a party was invited, a very large party, in order, as is often the case, to get a return invitation from the others. One half of the company was already seated at the card table, the other half awaited the result of the stereotype preliminary observation of the lady of the house. Now let us see what we can do to amuse ourselves. They had got just so far and the conversation began to crystallize, as it could but do with the scanty stream which the commonplace world supplied. Amongst other things they spoke of the Middle Ages, some praised that period as far more interesting, far more poetical than our own too sober present, indeed Councillor Knapp defended this opinion so warmly, that the hostess declared immediately on his side, and both exerted themselves with unwearied eloquence. The counselor boldly declared the time of King Hans to be the noblest and the most happy period. They had got just so far, and the conversation began to crystallize, as it could but do with the scanty stream which the commonplace world supplied. Amongst other things they spoke of the Middle Ages, some praised that period as far more interesting, far more poetical than our own too sober present. Indeed Councillor Knapp defended this opinion so warmly, that the hostess declared immediately on his side, and both exerted themselves with unwearied eloquence. The Councillor boldly declared the time of King Hans to be the noblest and the most happy period. While the conversation turned on this subject, and was only for a moment interrupted by the arrival of a journal that contained nothing worth reading, we will just step out into the antechamber where cloaks, mackintoshes, sticks, umbrellas, and shoes, were deposited. Here sat two female figures, a young and an old one. One might have thought at first they were servants come to accompany their mistresses home, but on looking nearer, 
one soon saw they could scarcely be mere servants, their forms were too noble for that, their skin too fine, the cut of their dress too striking. Two fairies were they, the younger, it is true, was not Dame Fortune herself, but one of the waiting maids of her handmaidens who carry about the lesser good things that she distributes, the other looked extremely gloomy, it was care. She always attends to her own serious business herself, as then she is sure of having it done properly. While the conversation turned on this subject, and was only for a moment interrupted by the arrival of a journal that contained nothing worth reading, we will just step out into the antechamber, where cloaks, mackintoshes, sticks, umbrellas, and shoes, were deposited. Here sat two female figures, a young and an old one. One might have thought at first they were servants come to accompany their mistresses home, but on looking nearer, one soon saw they could scarcely be mere servants, their forms were too noble for that, their skin too fine, the cut of their dress too striking. Two fairies were they, the younger, it is true, was not Dame Fortune herself, but one of the waiting maids of her handmaidens who carry about the lesser good things that she distributes, the other looked extremely gloomy, it was care. She always attends to her own serious business herself, as then she is sure of having it done properly. They were telling each other, with a confidential interchange of ideas, where they had been during the day. The messenger of fortune had only executed a few unimportant commissions, such as saving a new bonnet from a shower of rain, etc., but what she had yet to perform was something quite unusual. They were telling each other, with a confidential interchange of ideas, where they had been during the day. The messenger of fortune had only executed a few unimportant commissions, such as saving a new bonnet from a shower of rain, etc., but what she had yet to perform was something quite unusual. I must tell you, said she, that today is my birthday, and in honor of it, a pair of walking shoes or galoshes has been entrusted to me, which I am to carry to mankind. These shoes possess the property of instantly transporting him who has them on to the place or the period in which he most wishes to be, every wish, as regards time or place, or state of being, will be immediately fulfilled, and so at last man will be happy, here below. I must tell you, said she, that today is my birthday, and in honor of it, a pair of walking shoes or galoshes has been entrusted to me, which I am to carry to mankind. These shoes possess the property of instantly transporting him who has them on to the place or the period in which he most wishes to be, every wish, as regards time or place, or state of being, will be immediately fulfilled, and so at last man will be happy, here below. Do you seriously believe it? replied Care, in a severe tone of reproach. No, he will be very unhappy and will assuredly bless the moment when he feels that he has freed himself from the fatal shoes. Stupid nonsense, said the other angrily. I will put them here by the door. Someone will make a mistake for certain and take the wrong ones, he will be a happy man. Such was their conversation. Do you seriously believe it? replied Care, in a severe tone of reproach. No. He will be very unhappy, and will assuredly bless the moment when he feels that he has freed himself from the fatal shoes. Stupid nonsense, said the other angrily. I will put them here by the door. Someone will make a mistake for certain and take the wrong ones, he will be a happy man. Such was their conversation. Reading bedtime stories is about so much more than just saying the words on the page. It is about sitting together, spending time undistracted by anything else, holding on to the books, and holding on to one another. Every time we tuck our children in bed and read them a book, we write the story of our presence in our children's heart. I am Shio Chen, I wish you get a good night's sleep.